Hello, my name is Mark Marnell from Bentley Systems and in this video I'm going to show the creation of a template that can be used later on for corridor design. So from my Open Roads modeling workflow, the corridors tab, I have create template. This can be done in any file because when the create template panel opens up we are looking at the template library. So you could be working in any DGN file and you will be able to get access to this. So here's an example of a template. We'll create one, something similar to this. And what we're trying to generate is a linear feature at the required position. So edge of pavements, edge of shoulder, center line, and also the components in this case that make up the road. So wearing course, intermediate course, etc. So on the left hand side, we have a set of folders with optional subfolders into which I'm going to create this new template. So right hand mouse button, new template. And I'm going to start with a simple template. So right hand mouse button gives you the menu, a simple template. Let's call it wearing course. I want a default cross fall of two and a half percent. I want a default thickness of 40 millimeters and 3.65 meter lane. So you can see on my cursor now I have the component attached to my cursor. I want to give the feature definition as well of asphalt wearing course. Now I want to do both sides of the road at once. So right hand mouse button, you notice there is a mirror option and I now get left and right. And I'm just going to snap to the zero zero coordinate. That will be my origin. You notice I'm getting edge of pavement as my feature names. That's by default. If I look at dynamic settings, it has the point name by default is edge of pavement. And actually, I want to change this one. So double clicking on the point name brings up the panel. I want to call that center line. Let's hit apply. You notice it's changed. And I want to give it a proper feature definition. So from my template points, pavement, center line. And let's apply that. This has no constraints on the point because that is the origin. But if I look at the edge of pavement left or edge of pavement right, I can select that with my little target icon, select that. So edge of pavement right, this needs to be given a feature definition. Edge of pavement. And you notice it's constrained both with a slope and a horizontal offset, which is showing me by the red, it's fully constrained from the center line point. There are various options that you can use for constraining them. In this case, we're sticking with the slope and the horizontal offset. So I have my first layer done. The middle mouse button zooms in and out and holding the shift key down changes the vertical exaggeration. I'm going to turn off display point names just for the moment, just so we can see the components as they come in. And rather than defining them all at once, we can use components that have been pre-prepared. So standard curbs, for example, rather than having to define them every time, we can say we have a set of standard curbs so I'm just going to drag and drop my standard curb. Right hand mouse button mirror is still on, so I'm getting both sides. If I turn that off, I only get the one side. Turn it back on. So I want to put curb either side. Likewise, I'm going to add a sidewalk with a buffer. Quite simply, just drag and drop that. And you notice my template is being built up very, very quickly. I'm now going to put cut and fill on either side, and I'll make the left different to the right. Once again, there are some end conditions for cut. Let's put in a simple one in two cut. 
mirror is still on, so I'm going to turn that off. But right hand mouse button, I want to reflect it so it's going to the left. So there's my cut on the left, and I'll do a fill as well. On the right hand side, let's do something slightly different. We'll put in a right hand mouse button, turn off reflect, put in a ditch and a simple fill slope of one in three. Okay, so now there's my cross-sectional template complete, complete. I haven't put in any other layers underneath. One thing I do need to do, if I double click on the point, I know that this road can get super elevated. So that left edge, edge of pavement left, let's give it a feature definition as well. I want to make sure I've turned on this super elevation flag for that point. Hit apply. Target the center point as well. That is going to be also used for super elevation. And we'll target the right point and turn that on and apply. Just to show the end condition for this ditch, if I double click on this point, the bottom of the ditch, you'll notice I have here the check for interception is not on. So this cut ditch will come down to here without looking for the ground. It'll move across to here without looking for the ground because the next point also has that turned off. And then finally, it will search for the ground as it goes back up that slope. And that slope is infinite, so it's just going to keep going until it finds the ground. And if it doesn't find it, we'll then look for the fill situation. So let's see if that actually works. Using the test button, you notice it's telling me the end condition priorities. There's a conflict. So why is that? Well, which comes first, the cut or the fill? So let's check the priorities. So on the left hand side, these two, if you notice, the cut slope has a priority of five and the fill slope has a priority of five. So it doesn't know which to search for first. So if I make that priority two, any number less than five, we'll search for cut first and then we'll search for fill. So just to test, we can draw a pseudo ground. So let's say at 2%. If I draw this ground at 2%, you notice on the left hand side, I'm getting cut then fill and on the right hand side I'm getting the cut ditch until the ground goes below the bottom of the ditch because that is um, the priority was search for cut first so I'll be looking at this if I double click on the bottom of the fill you notice it's saying check for the interception place the point but it was not infinite, so it was only searching that distance, a horizontal offset of 1.5. So if I turn on end condition is infinite and retest. As I go down, my fill slope now continues. So that template is created and ready for use at a later date. If I did have to add something to, let's say I wanted to add just a bottom component right hand mouse button I can add a another component this time I'm going to use a constrained component call it sub base and I'm going to give it some aggregate feature definition aggregate type a and because it's constrained I'm just going to let's also change the the name but I'm just going to um, click to the various points that are in there to make a very simple um, sub base and then right hand mouse button finish 
and that is my completed template. So when I do a file close, I get asked, do I want to save it? I've saved yes. And that template is now ready for use. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.